several presentations at ASCO covering the VB2121 uh, car T cell construct, covering the uh, Janssen, the J and J uh, Cartitude trial, and there were some new constructs also trying to improve on the efficacy of CAR T cells. So I think the, the, the first one, and that's the largest clinical trial that has ever been performed in multiple myeloma with CAR T cells was the, the KARMA trial. And in the KARMA trial, 140 patients with very advanced multiple myeloma were treated. So a high proportion of patients um, uh, triple refractory and, and more than one quarter of the patients even penta refractory, which means that the patient is refractory not only to Revlimid and uh, Velcade bortezomib, but also to anti-CD38 antibodies, daratumumab or isatuximab and to carfilzomib and pomalidomib. So really a very extremely intensively pre-treated patient population with, a, with multiple myeloma cells that were kind of refractory to everything that was um, available for patients in most of, of our countries. And in spite of this, at the highest dose level, the response rate was more than 80%, nearly 40% actually achieved a complete remission. And at the highest dose level, we now see a progression-free survival of more than 12 months. And in patients that are achieving a complete remission and uh, also being MRD negative, the progression-free survival in these very intensively pre-treated patients was more than 20 months. So I think it's uh, in the beginning, I thought maybe we should cure every patient with CAR T cells, but I think if we consider these extremely heavily pretreated patients and the other options that we have, this is an exceptional treatment um, outcome. So I think CAR T cells are really offering a completely new treatment modality for patients with multiple myeloma. The, the other point which I, I want to mention is also the, the safety. Most of the patients developed some cytokine release syndrome. That's mainly fever. Um, some of these patients need some fluids to stabilize the circulation. But I think with all this, it's it, in the vast majority of patients, it was extremely well tolerated. On the other hand, there is a a small proportion of patients that really develop a more severe cytokine release syndrome where we need vasopressors to stabilize uh, the, the blood pressure or that they really develop some neurotoxicity, but this was only about 6%, so rather limited, uh, when, especially when compared to patients with lymphoma or ALL in which CAR T cell therapy is much more cumbersome and then has a much higher... Uh, percentage of severe uh, cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. So in summary, it's a, it's a fairly safe treatment. It requires 14 days of inpatient therapy, um, but it's, and it's extremely effective in very advanced, uh, in very in patients with very advanced multiple myeloma. The CAR-T2 trial is, is another CAR construct it has two binding domains to BCMA, and the, the follow-up is rather short, but the response rate in a similar um, pre-treated, heavily pre-treated patient co uh, cohort is even higher. So we have 100% overall response rate with more than 66% uh, complete remissions and with a short follow-up of, of about 11 months most nearly, I think only four or five patients actually had a progression or relapse. So again, an extremely effective treatment. And I think uh, it, it really confirms that CAR T cell therapy is making a difference in the future for treatment of multiple myeloma. Then we have some new constructs. One is the Orvacel, 
or the other one is a construct, the BB1, BB, BB21, BB2127, which is a specific, both are specific uh, T cell uh, construct, or, or they have a, a specific T cell composition. So they have more T cells with a longer persistence because persistence of the CAR T cells in most of the trials up to now is an issue. So after about one year, most of the patients have lost their CAR T cells. So now a lot of strategies like with Aura cell or with the B, B2127 are trying to create a CAR T cell product that can persist for a longer time period in a patient and thereby to increase the efficacy or another strategy also by uh, developed by the BMS and Juno is the, uh, the uh, gamma secretase inhibitor uh, in addition to the CAR T cells. So they can actually increase the expression of BCMA on the myeloma cells and thereby also increase the efficacy. So CAR T cell therapy is really um, becoming reality and, and we all believe that in the beginning of next year, maybe even at the end of this year, we already have um, with the ID cell one of these CAR T cell products available for patients outside of clinical trials. Now, I, I think the, the, the issue, of course, is like with all the CAR T cells, is the price. It's a very expensive treatment. Um, apart from this, I think the, the uh, tolerability, the safety of the product is, is, is quite good when compared especially to the other CAR T cell products that are now already commercially available for patients with lymphoma and ALL. Um, I think it's, it, it's an issue that the treatment has to be restricted to certain centers that are really equipped in managing patients with CAR T cells and also managing the, the side effects of CAR T cells. I think that the novel constructs that was, I was mentioning, the BV2127, the Orvis cell, also the follow-up of the CAR T2 trial, which looks extremely promising. Also the, the uh, Juno study with the combination of the, of the gamma secretase inhibitor with the, um, with the BCMA-targeted uh, CAR T cells. And also, and that's, I think, is, is very interesting, uh, CAR T cell trials that are targeting um, targets apart from BCMA, like SLAMF7 or CD38. So there will be one European study that was uh, funded by the European Commission, the Car CARAMBA trial, which is going to start in the next two weeks here in, in Würzburg, but also in other European uh, um, centers in which the SLAMF7 CAR T cell product is being used to treat patients with multiple myeloma. So it's a, of course, at the moment, it's a treatment which requires uh, inpatient therapy for at least 14 days. So this is, is clearly an issue. Um, also, the, 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 the product has to be generated. It takes some time. And we have to bridge the patient between the obtainment, the, the look of, of, of leukocytes, the leukophoresis, and the CAR T cell reinfusion. So, in some of these trials, it can take five to six weeks until we get the CAR T cell therapy back. And it's often um, not easy to bridge the patient. So, this is, is clearly an issue. And um, for, um, for every health, care system, the price of the CAR T cell products are clearly an issue and we have to see how much the, 
different national health services in, in Europe are going to cover uh, the, the CAR T cell therapy. But it has happened in, in lymphoma and ALL in most of the European countries. So I'm very optimistic that we'll so soon see um, at least the BCMA CAR T cell, especially the BB2121 ID cell product, to be available for patients with uh, multiple myeloma. Now, I think it's a, it's a, what we have to learn, it's a new technology and it's improving enormously. So what we see now is the first or second generation CAR T cell product, but we see more and more new developments coming. So I think we can all be very optimistic about the further development of CAR T cells also for our myeloma patients.